All right, guys. Hi, I'm Joel. Uh, I'm going to share my testimony on how I went to hell. Um, back whenever I was a teenager, man, I fell, I fell away from Jesus, man, and just started getting into, like, hoodoo, voodoo, witchcraft, whatever you want to call it, man. It's all the same inside of the Lord. Um, so, you know, one night I was over at my girlfriend's house. I was 17 years old and I just, for some reason, started getting tired. So, and I mean, it was, you know, kind of late, it was probably seven, eight o'clock at night and we had school the next day. So I, you know, I told her bye and I went home. Well, as I got home, I walked through the front door of my mom and dad's house. Um, my mom and dad, my mom was sitting there reading like, uh, some kind of girly novel. My dad was sitting in his recliner reading the Bible and, you know, I said, you know, hi, I went to my bedroom. Um, back then, man, I was, you know, I mean, I was, I was a hell raiser, man. Um, I was not. I was a worldly, worldly person, man. I mean, worldly. And I was bad. I mean, I was pretty good at it, but I was, you know, I was just, I'm not that same guy. Well, that night, I walk past my mom and dad. I go into my bedroom, and I lay on my twin, I had a twin-size bed, and I laid across the the width of the bed. Not, the, not laid down in the length of the bed, but the width of the bed. And I knew I was in my bedroom. Um, the light from the, the street light was shining through my bedroom window. And all I did was just close my eyes for a second. And, I mean, it was like I blinked my eyes is all, all it was. I, was. I just blinked my eyes. I mean, I was tired. I had this weird tiredness on me. And as I'm laying across the width of the bed, uh, I blinked my eyes. And it is, I am surrounded by darkness. And I thought, you know, somebody had shot out the, or the street light went off or whatever. Well, come to find out, man, as I'm, I'm, but I felt like I was standing up. And for, you know, like just a split second, I'm sitting there thinking, man, what happened? Where am I? Well, all of a sudden, man, I don't, I don't know how to explain this, but it was like the realization of where I was at happened and it hit me full force, man. Then all of a sudden I started hearing this demonic laughter coming from in front of me. Then one coming from the side of me, from another side, from another side until they just, they were engulfing me and I am sitting there just freaking out, dude. I mean, I knew immediately that I was in hell. There's no exception. You know where you're at. And you are there. Well, I knew that these, these demons, devils, fallen angels, whatever you want to call them, were going to just, oh man. I knew that they were going to rip me to shreds, man. And see, back then, whenever I was 17, man, I thought I was just, uh, you know, six foot two and bulletproof, man. I mean, you're just, you're a kid. You think you're hard and you're not really that hard. Um, well, the next thing you know, dude, I don't know why I thought this, but I thought it. And as I thought it, I started screaming out his name. And I mean, I mean, just the utter terrification that you know that you're in hell that you have been separated from life itself. That you are going to go through the second death for all eternity hits you. Just, it hits your every being, your essence. It hits your spirit, man. And you can do nothing about it. Well, as I'm standing there in hell, these things are just, man, I mean, it was just intense horror and I start screaming out Jesus save me Jesus save me and I mean I must have said it about seven or eight times man it could have been a lot more than that 
but I'm sitting there yelling as loud as I can, man. And I mean, I'm just screaming. And it gets even more intense, man. The laughter, man, starts to like start. It almost like drives you crazy and the darkness just like drives you crazy. I didn't get to smell anything. I didn't get to see. There was no like foreign orange light. I think I was in a prison cell or in a what uh, I heard one pastor say that he was in a pit. And I'm looking up and I'm just yelling for Jesus, man. Save me, save me, save me. And I could tell these demons are getting closer and closer. Well, all of a sudden, I mean, it felt like I was there for, I don't know, man, maybe eight minutes or so. It could have been, I mean, man, it could have been three minutes, three to eight minutes. I, I don't know. I mean, time there, you just, you know, that's there's no time. So you don't know how long stuff takes anymore. Because time is an earthly thing. Um, that's why we spin around, you know, the globe. And then the globe spins around the sun. That's, that's time. That's how you judge time. So, that's how we judge time for time. On different sets of rules for time. Um, but I know, man, whenever I, I mean, I let out the loudest yell I've ever yelled in my life. And I said, Jesus, save me. Then I opened my eyes. I was back in my bed, still laying the width of the bed. I jump up. I'm covered in sweat, man. I come outside. Well, okay. Before that happened, hold on. Before I blinked, I was back in my body. I remember that I was floating up through the earth and I'd come out to the outside of my mom and dad's house and I was thinking to myself I was looking around I could see the trees I could see the uh, street lamp I could see the houses but everything was calm I mean there was like no wind there was no cold there was no hot I was in the spirit and I'm looking at the wall and I'm like dude thank God I'm back thank God I'm back thank God I'm back and I run through the wall. My feet are still on the ground. They're not in the house level. Uh, the house level is about two to two and a half feet above the the ground because we got a crawl space. In some areas it's about three foot. Um, most areas is about three foot. So I know that the the floor is almost up to my thighs, almost up to my waist. I run into the living room. My my dad, he's reading the Bible, and he looks up. And as if he knows something's there. And I could see my mom still sitting there reading. And my dad was just looking down the hallway like, what is going on? So then I look at them and I'm like, oh man, I'm so thankful that I'm back. <coughs> so I tell myself, man, I got to get back in my body. I mean, immediately I turn around, I open my eyes and I'm still laying the length of the the bed i'm covered in sweat and my body's like a cold sweat uh i jump up i come into the living room and my dad is sitting there and i'm just staring at him and my mom is sitting there and she's reading my dad goes man what's wrong with you and i didn't tell him anything not for a couple of years i didn't say anything i said nothing man nothing Went back in my bedroom, terrified for the rest of the night. Um, got a little bit of sleep, went to school the next morning. Didn't tell anybody that this happened, man. I didn't tell anybody until after I graduated. Um, years later, I'm sitting there telling my dad how I experienced this happening. He's like, oh my God, man. Back whenever you were a teenager, you guys were so like out of control that me and your mom were praying that God would allow one of the children to experience what hell was like. I said, well, don't ever pray that again because I'm the one that got to experience that and I don't ever want to go back there again. So this is my testimony and I hope it helps. I hope it gets to the person that it's intended to, to speak to because you might be on the wrong track, man. Trust me, just give it up. Go back to Jesus, man. He loves you. He loves you. He has nothing but good for you, man. 
trust me. Uh, and well, that's it, man. I hope this reaches one person and changes their life because what I went through, if it, you know, if it just touches one person and gets you back to Jesus Christ, then everything he put me through is worth it. Thank you. God bless. Have a great night.